Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but the, the, our lives have drastically changed and the way we do church has changed. Uh, we will be doing online and live stream services only for the next six weeks, probably. And so um, church has changed for us. And so um, even though church has changed for us and even though we, we, we have some things that, that seem very different in our lives, um, we wanted to keep things as normal as possible. And that applies to our Sunday morning classes as well. And so if you're watching this, um, hopefully you are involved in, in a Sunday morning class. And, uh, and we're going to continue to study God's word together. So we made it a, a long way through Romans. And so we want to continue to do Romans. And so in the coming weeks, uh, you will see your familiar teachers kind of breaking down um, in, in a, you know, a five to ten minute video, um, a chapter uh, of Romans as we would. Um, and so hopefully we kind of continue um, in our community together, both in reading God's word, but sharing prayer requests and, and kind of communicating uh, needs that we see. Um, and so uh, we're doing this just in, in, as an effort to to keep things as normal as possible. And so if you have your Bible, hopefully um, during this, this time where you get these videos and you get this email, um, you can read the passage uh, that we're going through. And then hopefully we can have some questions for you as well to consider and think about. And so I'm going to be looking at um, very quickly Romans chapter 10. And this is a, a really uh, interesting book, uh, interesting chapter for a number of reasons. First of all, it's pretty short, so it's 21 verses. So hopefully, um, as as I'm talking, you can read through it on your own. <clears throat> but we we come to chapter 10 after Romans 8 and 9, which uh, our teachers uh, taught through and had to navigate through because there's some really difficult and and heavy passages. And and the the classes that I sat in who who talked through those did an excellent job communicating. Um, what those chapters were about and, and why they're so impactful and why they're so powerful and why in some senses they're so difficult um, because Romans uh, 8 and 9 really do talk about the, this concept of, of God's sovereignty, God's control, particularly over um, the, the saving of, of human beings. When we come to salvation, how, how God's sovereign hand is, is in that and, and is over that. And so chapter 10 really is is sort of this this turn where Paul begins to unpack like what is the role what is the responsibility of human beings when it comes to salvation what role do we play um, and so it really is kind of a, a turn and a, and a switch where, where Paul begins to, to move the conversation and he, and he points to Israel and, and talks about Israel's response and then what what is the response of, 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 of humanity what when it comes to embracing salvation or coming to faith, what elements do we find? And so that's where we, we find ourselves in, in Romans chapter 10. And so um, Romans chapter 10 opens with Paul communicating his desire for his peers and his country and his nation to turn and, and embrace the truth of Christ. And I think that's something that, that many of us can 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 relate to that we look in the we look in the world around us we look at our culture we look at the things that are happening we look at our communities and, and we see this sort of this level of brokenness and we, we want um, those that we know and in, in our in our country to be a reflection of of their decision to to know God and to follow Him and we see that there Paul opens up with kind of a, a sadness that it's his it says he in verse one it's his heart's desire and prayer concerning their salvation. And then he points to why perhaps um, both Israel and also um, ourselves, the obstacles that are there in front of us when it comes to salvation. And he points to things like that there's a disconnect in, in their knowledge, that they have a zeal for God, um, but they are actually lacking the right uh, knowledge. And we see that, there, that there's this disconnect in, in, in what they understand about what makes them righteous. And so you and I, that's, that's a word for you and I too, because for many of us, when we think about what makes me righteous in the eyes of God, many times we, we have a misunderstanding. There is a disconnect in what we know, because naturally we, we revert back to how Paul might describe the law, that in order for me to be right in the eyes of God, there are certain things I need to be doing. There are certain things I don't need to be doing. Um, that overall, in general, I need to be focusing on my behavior, how I treat people. We would gravitate to that. And, and Paul is saying that that's what most people gravitate to. He would say that, that in some ways is what the people of Israel would gravitate to, that in order for them to be righteous before God, it meant them living out the law. And so there is a disconnect there, Paul says. And so for, for many of us, it's like we also have to consider that disconnect. 
um, that that many of us, and in, in like how Paul describes Israel, that they failed to seek a relationship with God in the right way. It's not that they weren't seeking a relationship with God. Many people seek to have a relationship with God, but the way we go about doing that is is just as important as the decision to want that relationship. And that is kind of what Paul begins to unpack and, and begins to, um, to, to, to to reveal to us and to tell us. And, and he also points to just the simplicity of faith in, in what our call, like what is our call to this idea of salvation? What are, what are we supposed to do? Because obviously we're supposed to do something. We have some role to play. And so Paul points us back to uh, a, th- a theme that he's been pointing to over and over and over again from, from Romans chapter 5 where he um, unpacks the idea of Abraham. He points to faith, that our, our, our role when it comes to salvation is not action, it is not proving, it is not earning, it is simply our idea of faith, which he kind of unpacks um, where he says that we confess with our mouth, right? We believe in our hearts, that Jesus is Lord. And it goes on to say um, in, in chapter or verse, sorry, verse uh, 10, rather, it says, uh, verse nine, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart resulting in righteousness. It's a huge, huge statement, a huge, huge sentence that because because he really unpacks what actually makes us Righteous, And he says, one who believes with the heart and one who confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. Um, and then he goes on in verse 13. One of my favorite verses says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that's such a huge, huge passage and a huge encouragement for us as we think about, you know, what does it mean to have a relationship with God? Paul unpacks this in a very simplistic way. He says, look, if you if you want salvation. So all, all it takes is, is, this, is this idea of believing in your heart. What do you believe? Not what have you done and not what are you doing, but what do you believe? And that's such a powerful thing, I think, for us. And then, and then he goes on in the, second, in the second part of this chapter. He begins to um, sort of go back and forth between Old Testament and New Testament. And as I was reading that, it, it recalled to mind how... Um, how, how important the Old Testament is, particularly as we read the New Testament, because we're able to really understand the New Testament at a, at a totally different level and in a totally different light if we are aware of what the Old Testament has communicated. And Paul um, uses the Old Testament and he begins to, 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 to move from, okay, if our result is belief, right? If that's what, if that's what we are called to do, if that's what God calls us to, is to believe, then, then, then what do we do with the world around us? How do we point people in the world around us what is our role now and so it begins to stair step this idea of 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 how are people saved and, and how does god work in the world and he, and he and he uses this really um powerful analogy where he begins to ask the question of of who who is going to be sent and he says in verse 15 he says how can uh and ver, or, sorry verse 14 he says how can they um then call upon them if they have not believed in and how can they believe without hearing him and how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? And he says, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Now, I don't. this verse I don't think is, is really necessarily a, a call to missions, but it certainly is um, the idea of, of God using people to bring about his purposes. Like we see that throughout all of scripture. And that's a powerful thing for us to remember, particularly in a time like this that God uses people to bring about his purposes. And so Paul says, when it comes to salvation, there need to be preachers. There, need, there needs to be people who are speaking the gospel because um, it is from the preaching that people hear. And it's from the hearing that people believe. And it's from the believing that people begin to call upon the name of the Lord. And so that's just a really brief snapshot of, of chapter 10. Um, looking forward to hearing from the rest of our teachers as we continue to kind of move um, through the book, book of Romans, and we would encourage you to read along with 